Today, I'm speaking with uh, Philip Golingai, a Sabahan from Penampang, who has actually uh, worked in Kuala Lumpur for many, many years. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Philip has worked with the Star newspaper, one of the major newspapers in Malaysia for more than 20 years. Uh, he is more or less their resident expert on Sabah. And I thought it would be interesting to speak to Philip as somebody uh, who knows both sides of the issue. In other words, he knows what the views of the Sabahans are. And he also knows the views of uh, Peninsula Malaysians having worked and lived in, in, in Malaya for, for such a long time. So Philip, thank you very much for coming to my short podcast. Can I just get a sense from you, uh, your opinion? Um, how do West Malaysians or Peninsula Malaysians generally feel about the Malaysian agreement? Are they interested, not interested, ignorant, or they think that, oh, this is just a historical issue. We don't know why you're making such a big fuss. Okay, I'll answer as uh, somebody from KL. Huh? Yeah. Sure, go ahead. Uh, MA63, what's that? Mm, mm, mm. So basically, the bottom the line is that they think that it's, it's a non-issue for them. No, no, it's not that they don't think it's a non-issue. They don't even know that it's an issue. Mm, mm. They are actually clueless. They're not that interested, except for those who are really following uh, Sabah politics or Sarawak politics or the federal regulations. But mm. the public in general, I don't think they even know uh, that about Sabah or Sarawak or they've never been there. So sure. I don't think there's much interest. Now, uh, uh, coming, coming, coming from the media, can I get what is your sense of, of, of the West Malaysian media in terms of covering Sabah and Sarawak? Is it a priority for them or they will only cover if some CNA ministers visit Sabah and Sarawak? It depends on the uh, situation. If, if you talk about news in general, Sabah actually generates uh, more news than uh, Sarawak. It's just because we have the Abu Sayyaf uh, kidnapping. We have the major... Uh, Mount Kinabalu earthquake, then we have like many strange kind of story and also Sabah politics is much more colorful than in Sarawak. But I think Sarawak now also is making news, especially mm. with the in the business news because uh, Sarawak government is suing Petronas. So the oil issue is quite interesting. But in general, uh, except for all this uh, issue, uh, it's something like the further away from your mind or from your sight uh, people are less interested in the issue. People are, we are actually a uh, very KL-based kind of uh, uh, readership. Mm -hmm. Coming back to this issue of Malaysia agreement, I've, I'm, I'm sure you've been following this issue for many, many years. Uh, what is your sense? As you know, there are many uh, 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 MA63 groups operating in Sabah, Sarawak, the activists. Uh, one of the arguments they've always put forward is that the Malaysia agreement is an international agreement. We are unhappy with our experience in the Federation. So maybe the remedy lies in under international law. Uh, do, do you think that's feasible or you think that uh, they should be trying something else? Okay, just to answer the uh, in a different way. Yeah. First of all, this issue is very emotional, number one. Number two, many of those who are commenting do not really know much about what they're commenting. But the feeling on the ground, if you go to Sabah, and I'm quite familiar with Sarawak, is they are a, a big percentage who are unhappy that they are like the stepchild of uh, Putrajaya. Mm. So that's that. But whether international is the remedy, maybe not, because I think we have to solve it within the confines of this federal uh, demolition the federal, in, with, with the federal. Right, the structure of the federal state relationship, that's what you're saying. Yes. Yes. So basically, I mean, your thinking is, is that this is more of a political issue rather than a legal issue. Yes, it's a, it's a political solution, actually. If uh, the, uh, just say, if the government of Sabah and the government of Sarawak, they have to talk to Putrajaya and settle it. Then but the counter argument, how... just playing the devil's advocate, the counter argument is that this thing has been happening what, for the last 20, 30 years. Uh, in fact, you can make a, a strong argument that Sabah and Sarawak for most of the last 50, 60 years has been part of the ruling Barisan National and uh, Warisan was part of the ruling Pakatan Harapan. Since they're all from the same coalition, why are we seeing, still seeing all this unhappiness and why is it they can't resolve it even though they're part of the same coalition? Okay. It's because the coalition that you mentioned, BN, was very strong back then. Mm. But now, the federal government uh, is weak. 
So it's time for Sabah and Sarawak, if they're united, which is kind of impossible <laughs> that they're united. If they're united, maybe they can push. That's what I feel. But the problem also is, I think it's within. The, the politician in Sabah and Sarawak are divided. Mm. So they, they are not putting a united front. But in, in, yeah, but in, in public, yeah. they, in public, you wouldn't find any senior politicians saying they wouldn't champion MS sixty three. Every one of them will claim to champion MS sixty three in public. Correct, but yeah. <laughs> now let me ask you: What do you think the possible solutions are? Uh, given that this is a political issue, when when you see a lot of the groups in Sabah and Sarawak, well, at least the groups I interact with, they're all thinking of a of a legal remedy or some form of legal remedy. Uh, assuming that we don't take the legal route, we take the political route. What, what, what is the best way to approach this? Because in the last, uh, since the end of the Najib administration, uh, Najib was the one, of course, who started it after, after he had a scare in 2008. He started this uh, sort of a federal level uh, committee and uh, tried to relook at MA63 issue. Then it became a formalized committee under the PH administration. Uh, they claim to have resolved most of the issues other than four issues mostly related to oil and gas resources. But of course, the government fell suddenly in February. Uh, my, my understanding is that uh, out of the 21 issues discussed, a lot of them doesn't even uh, relate directly to MSCC3. A lot of it is administrative decentralized issues. Do you think this is the right way of going about solving this issue or you think that we need to reset the entire federal state relationship in Malaysia? Okay, but before you can reset everything, you, you need a united front. If the Sabah and Sarawak MPs are not uh, united even within Sabah and Sarawak and the Sabah and Sarawak MPs united as a Sabah and Sarawak front, we can't achieve that. So mm. there's no point of talking to federal government if you are not united. Ah, uh, okay, okay. What, what, what do you think of, of the attempt last year just to, uh, uh, what do you call so-called keep Sabah and Sarawak happy by modifying Article 1.2, 1.1, you know, to put the wording back to uh, the origin 1963. Uh, most people will say that that was purely symbolic. It had no real significance. Well, what is your view on this issue? Yeah. Okay. So I asked the minister in charge of that bill. I asked, so what happens when Sabah and Sarawak become equal partner to Jesse Peninsula Malaysia? Mm. The answer is, there's no answer. Mm. Mm. Because they don't know. It's something like you pass it and then we watch. So that's why there were uh, MPs who were not happy with that field because it's just a name. So, okay, like I asked this question. What's the difference? Okay, just say Sabah or Sarawak is equal partner. So does it mean we, it's, it's bigger than Selangor or what? So they can't answer. And then do we, do we get more money from that? Mm. Or do we have more autonomy? There's no answer. It is just like me giving you a, a certain title and that's the title. And there's no benefits coming from the title. Yes. <laughs> so listen, Philip, so how would you suggest besides the issue of unity? I think I, I, I sort of uh, partially agree with you that it's very difficult to get unity uh, within the, the state politics itself uh, and also between Sabah and Sarawak. But there seems to be a sort of an overarching uh, uh, thinking among uh, the political leadership that they have to face this issue. Uh, partly because I think there is some sort of a, a, a groundswell of support over this issue. But having said that, I think the other thing that is very clear is that uh, those parties who, who campaign exclusively MS63 have never really uh, won the vote. So if you look I at Sabah, right, those people yeah. who, who campaign exclusively, I wouldn't name any names, are they ne ne uh, never won on this. In Sarawak, uh, in fact, a lot of the candidates who campaign exclusively on this issue lost all their deposits. So given the fact that we have a, a, a disconnect between the political class and what's actually happening at the grassroots level, uh, how shall we take this issue forward? Can I have some of your suggestions? Okay, first of all, I agree with you. The, prop, the thing with the MS-63 is it doesn't win votes, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. number one. But politicians are still talking about it. So the way forward is maybe educating the masses on what is MS-63, number one. Number two, make sure that you can win, that the voters are pushing for it in the election, which the, the thing with us is we might not be an issue-based uh, uh, campaigning. It's very localized, etc., etc. Then only when they have a strong mandate, they know that this is what people want, then they talk to the federal government and then get uh, concessions from them. 
That's in terms of the awareness, can I ask what 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 is your 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 what do you call it your views? Because I know you interact with MPs across the board, also uh, Peninsula Malaysia MPs. Uh, what is your sense among the 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 so called uh, uh, what do you call it uh, members of parliament in the Malaysian system? Uh, not from Sabah and Sarawak, from uh, Malaya. Uh, do they take this issue seriously, or or they think that this is just a side issue? Just based on the bill, uh, the bill on the equal right uh, thing, when I talk to the MPs of the, the current government, mm. actually, I think they just voted it because it looks like it's a good thing to vote, but I don't think they were that sincere, actually. I mean, they, they, don't, they don't really care. And then you see the other thing. They just say, Sabah and Sarawak asking for 40% of the oil. Mm. Do you think the uh, non Sabah Sarawak MPs are interested in giving that uh, percentage to Sabah mm. or Sarawak and then you can see from how the federal government back then were not I mean they promised that in the their manifesto when, when they spoke to the Sabah and Sarawak voters but I don't think they're interested because it's not practical mm. Mm. so it's, I think it's just lip service actually mm. so this is one of those issues which is it makes for good political theater, but actually there's really no real substance behind it. Is that what you're saying or, or am I hearing you wrong? No, I, I, I agree with you. And also, I think there's no point of the political theater because it doesn't bring in votes, actually. Mm. They should just not pretend that they're interested. Yes, but you and I both know, right, in the last few uh, election campaigns in Malaysia, if you go to Sabah and Sarawak, almost uh, any politician standing on the podium at one point or another, they will mention that they will fight for autonomy at MS 63 <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, but that's why I was wondering. I, it doesn't, I don't think it, I mean, okay, maybe they get 10% or 20% of the vote because you can see certain candidates who are fighting for it. Uh, I think he managed to become an MP. Maybe because of that, because his area are maybe more into MS3 and autonomy, but I think in general, no. Mm. Anyway, one of the one of the suggestions uh, that, that came out in my discussion with many people is that uh, they say that one way to resolve this issue is that for Sabah and Sarawak to have more or less independent state governments, that whoever is ruling Sabah and Sarawak should not be part of any federal coalition or should not be allied to any federal coalition. Uh, being an independent player is the only way to confront the federal government and get things done. Would you agree with that view or you think that it's just been naive? Okay. Uh, yes and no. I say no, actually. You know why? For example, Warisan now is uh, not in the federal government. But I don't see them pushing for MS63 and etc. Cetera, et cetera. And then in the end, this whether you're independent or not independent, just use the PBS, uh, PBS uh, experience. The gov this federal government controls the money, controls the, uh, yeah, the budget. So, so how much can you make noise? Yes. So basically, the, 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 the bottom line is, is that it really is up to the federal government. Really, they want to resolve this issue. And if they do want to resolve this issue, how sincere they are. Yes. Maybe what we should do is we should get a Sabahan or Sarawak, Sarawakian to BPM. <laughs> yes, well, I'm, I'm sure we, we were all hoping for, the, for that day to arrive, but I don't think it will uh, arrive anytime soon. So, Philip. Okay, it's uh, possible, you know, nowadays. Oh, is it? Okay. I'm, I'm glad that you're very optimistic. <laughs> So Philip, I, I think I've covered most of the things I